I'm going to show you how to apply watercolor paint so you end up with a beautiful painting. So we're going to go through with some techniques. I'm going to show you some wet and wet techniques and wet on dry techniques to paint different subjects. Uh, secondly, we're going to be going through how much water to use and how much water and paint to mix together as well to get that lighter or darker value. And the third thing we're going to go through is some layering. So I'm going to show you how I layer my colors to create depth and shadows. So wet on wet watercolor technique. Now there's a couple ways to do this. The first way is just to apply some clean water onto the page. Okay. Or you can put in some light color of a, another wash. So for example, I might start with a bit of ultramarine blue. Okay, just a light wash of uh, ultramarine or cerulean blue. Actually, this is cerulean blue. Doesn't matter, just a, a bluish sort of value like that. Okay, bring that across. And you can see that paper is still wet. If you look at it from an angle, you'll be able to see there's a bit of sheen to the paper. That's when you know it's still wet and great for going in through wet and wet, adding in some wet and wet techniques. So I might want to add in, for example, some clouds. So I'll pick up some purple on the brush like that. And what I, what I do is that I'll pick up that color and I'll quickly dry the brush off on a bit of on a bit of damp cloth here to remove that excess paint and I can get in an indication of this of these clouds. And the more paint that you use, the higher concentration of paint and color that you use, the darker this cloud shape will appear. So you kind of want to vary it. Okay, really want to vary it depending on what you're painting. Softer clouds that you just want to maybe imply, you just want to maybe want to use a little bit of paint, that's all. Okay, so you've got that nice, soft, irregular border, looks like a nice kind of cloud. And the time that you apply that paint as well makes a big difference. I'm applying it while the paper is still relatively wet. Now, wait it a little bit longer. If I wait a little bit longer, you'll find that the bottom part, if I go into the bottom part, it's not going to spread as much, okay? If I just wait a little bit, it may not be enough time. But, you you know, you want to make sure that if you want to portray something that maybe like a, a really abstract shape that doesn't have too many, you know, defined borders, you want to go in straight away while that paper is completely wet. If you want it to be kind of more sharper but still have soft borders wait a little bit and then go into it later so now if i just go into this bottom bit look at this it doesn't really spread around as much as you can see i mean this could be i don't know for, for all i know could this could be a bit of the ground or something like that a bit of the something here you know i could put in a tree trunk coming up like this okay like that and notice now the paint does not spread as much. It looks sharper. Even on the edges, the paint is kind of dried. Okay, so you don't get this, this kind of la like lots of blooms and things like that going on because the paper is just slightly damp. So you really want to make sure that you're going in at the right time. Okay, even here at the base, you see some of that paper has already started to dry at the base so I can just put in a bit of dark paint there and it stays put and you've got a sharp border there okay so that's a bit of wet in wet technique now if we want to go and try some wet on dry techniques pretty simple all you need to do is make sure the paper is dry which it is already pick up a little a little brush or whatever it is and just go in okay let's put in a let's let's paint a figure I'm going to just paint a figure walking to the left. Head slides it to the left. Here's the body, like that. There, leg forwards, and this leg backwards. It's not the best figure. Uh, maybe one just standing upright like this as well, looking at, the, looking at the, the viewer. Okay. But notice the difference between these figures, the edges of where the brush touches the paper versus there. See how the, the paint just spreads and you get these irregular borders, whereas here, here it's just all sharp, okay? So when you want to get in sharper details that don't move, that need to be representative of whatever you're painting, 
very representative of it could be like a particular landmark it could be the edge of an apple or the edge of a uh you know a building or something like that these wet on dry effects are so important in order to portray that like if i for example wanted to put a building or something in the background as well you know i'm just picking up any old color see the edges of that building if it's a rectangular building like that i don't want it to to just spread all over the place paint to go to go everywhere and the borders to be undefined so as you can see we've got ourselves a nice sharp border you know you can use any other colors and do the pretty much pretty much the same thing okay like that so comparing it to the left you can just see a just a stark contrast and i really love combining both wet and wet and wet on dry techniques together so that you get some the, the best of both worlds because sometimes you can go overboard with one or the other with wet with wet on wet you've got uh you lose the stru the structure and detail of everything whereas on wet and dry it sometimes looks too too sharp and too obvious so i always try to blend them a little bit now a little tip in terms of mixing your colors and how to apply those colors onto the, to the paper spend a lot of time playing around on your palette okay check out what i'm doing here i'm just mixing a bit of color in a bit a bit of water okay and uh, just some clean water into this gray color all right now the more water you add in here the lighter it's going to be so that's a little bit of water or lots of water like that and um if i add in a bit more paint in the water let's try this this becomes a little darker okay as we add more paint it becomes darker yet and we can just keep repeating this process and at the end of it get a pretty dark uh, a pretty dark value Okay, where we're not almost not using any water. I mean, I can pick up the paints just straight off the palette with no water at all, and that's what I get. This it's it just looks like opaque black there. So always spend time thinking about how much water you want to put in there. If you're painting the sky, you want to use lots of water. If you're painting something in the foreground, like these trees that are coming out in front of the sky. You want to add less water and more paint. So something like this, even something like that you can get away with. Even this one right at the end. You know, I often use really dark colors for some of the, the branches and twigs to really make them pop out against the sky. The darker you go, especially with some of these lighter backgrounds, the more contrast and um, the more attention you draw to that particular area. Some people prefer softer paintings where the contrasts aren't as stark aren't as obvious so you might want to go for a middle value like that but i like to use a combination of all these these sort of darker values i have some mid values and some really dark ones for some of those other branches so for wet in dry layering what we want to do is basically just pick up a darker color okay normally i use this to imply some figures or some other objects and things like that that are closer to the front of a scene so i might you know this figure might be a bigger sort of figure just in the front the foreground walking into a scene like that you know i might think to myself i want to have some shadows some kind of uh sharp sort of shadows running across the buildings like this you know layering on top of that previous color and look at where the paint touches the building the shadow is creating this sort of sharp line here, okay? Unlike there, when you go in, when it's wet, you get these sharp sort of effects, okay? And this allows you to make your paintings a bit more nuanced. So you've got 
I guess, different different sort of values in the painting because when you look around in life and you look around your reference photos as well, there are so many different colors and so many different values, lights and darks. So layering on top, wet and wet and wet and dry is so crucial if you want your paintings to look realistic. So this is already dried off. I can do the same thing and I can just pick up a bit of paint and just think, oh, well, I like the an idea of maybe a person walking through here, you know? Like that that could be a person standing around. This could be another one here. Look at that. Look how sharp that that figure has come out. You know? Just standing in the foreground. You, you know, it could be a, a case as well where you want to put in some other other trees, some sharper trees in the foreground. Maybe like a big one just coming through like that. You know? Probably not the best composition, but you can do that. Okay. Look at that just coming through in the foreground because it's darker and it's and it's sharp it goes over everything else if you have any questions let me know down in the comments and i'll get back to you if you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful do me a big favor and click the like button on the video and share it with a friend it really helps me to get my videos out to more people and if you want to see more watercolor tutorials videos and free workshops then make sure you subscribe hey there if you really want to level up your watercolor skills feel confident and relaxed when you're painting and just be proud to show your friends and family the beautiful paintings you create check out my 70 course watercolor essentials program in the video description i also have a patreon with up to 84 exclusive premium courses you can sign up and cancel at any time the link is also below in the description